Louis Barlantrust is pleased to present this video about turtles, made in honor of World Turtle Day, which is May 23rd. Chris Evers of Animal Embassy joins us at Ward Pound Ridge Reservation to teach us about the specimens that he's got in his care, along with a couple of shells. We hope you enjoy, and please subscribe to our channel. Alright, good afternoon. My name is Chris Evers, and I'm here on behalf of the Lewis Borough Land Trust uh, to educate you folks on turtles. And this is a video that we're doing for a variety of reasons, including um, for National Turtle Day, which is coming up. This is part of the endoskeleton. It's made of bone. All right, so um, in Connecticut and New York, since we're close to the border with Connecticut, um, we, we have a lot of the same species of turtles in Connecticut and other wildlife as well. Um, but New York is a really big state, so there are a lot of different types of habitats in New York, so there are more species of turtle in the overall state of New York. But in this area, we have about seven different species. Um, there may be a couple more depending on where exactly you are. So this is one of the 
the species in New York. You're not necessarily going to find it in this area, but this is a soft-shelled turtle. Box turtles are more common. Painted turtles, snapping turtles, wood turtles, musk turtles. These are turtles that are more commonly distributed around New York, uh, but this is a native species and it's a soft-shelled turtle. This is a water turtle. You can see the webbed feet. It moves faster than a land turtle because they have less shell. Water turtles, like musk turtles, have less shell and you can see that on this shell which does not have a turtle on the inside. They have less shell so they have more range of motion which gives them the ability to swim. So a land turtle walks pretty much like this. They have more shell like that box turtle. Then you've got animals like painted turtles, snapping turtles, musk turtles, spotted turtles, soft-shelled turtles. Those guys have less shell, so they're able to move faster because they have more range of motion. Mm -hmm. So again, if we look at this soft-shelled turtle, watch how it fast it can move those legs. In the water, this creature is very fast. On the land, it's kind of clumsy because it's not designed to live on the land. That very thin body like that helps them to move through the water more easily with those webbed feet, but it also allows them to hide underneath the sand. Inside this transport container, I have sand so that when the turtle is scared, what they do is they quickly cover themselves up with sand. Now, if it was a domed shell, more like the box turtle, then if there was a box turtle hiding underneath the, the sand, there would be a flat bottom and then a bump and then a flat bottom. So animals look for what doesn't quite look right. So if an animal sees a bump on the bottom, but everything else is flat, they might know that somebody's hiding underneath there. But in the case of the soft-shelled turtle, if the soft-shelled turtle is flat, when they hide underneath the sand, it's flat all the way across. So that's gonna help them to stay hidden completely. When it wants to breathe, it takes that long neck and that long nose, they put it up to the surface, they take a deep breath, they can hold their breath for a very long time, and this is going to sound strange, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my fellow humans, this turtle can breathe through its back end. All right. So we have one last turtle, and uh, this is our largest species in the United States, and the common snapping turtle is the largest species that we have in New York. So this is the shell of a common snapping turtle, and you compare that to the shell of the alligator snapping turtle. You can see there are certainly some similarities because these are related species, but the alligator snapping turtle snapping turtle has never been in the wild so I can't let them go that box turtle was a wild animal until somebody took it away from its home we never should take animals away from their natural habitat let's let them be where they belong we would never want anybody to take us away from where we live so um, snapping turtles um, they have a variety of different adaptations that help them to survive the tail is one the shell is another the camouflage is another the tail helps them to steer in the water. 
Their web feet help them to swim. The shell helps to protect them. But alligator snapping turtles like this one, because this is not a common snapping turtle, this is an alligator snapping turtle. They have something else. When they open up their mouth, you can see inside that mouth, they don't have any teeth. They do have a very sharp beak. Turtles don't have teeth. But what you can see when you look in there is that that turtle has an appendage, a little extension to its tongue. And that tiny little worm-like extension to the turtle's tongue is what's called a lure. So the turtle, in this case, lures fish into its mouth. So camouflage is extremely important because if the fish knows it's swimming into a turtle's mouth, there's no way it's gonna go into that turtle's mouth. But you can see the eyes are camouflaged. The shell is camouflaged. So if this turtle blends in with the bottom, as all snapping turtles do, but in this case, the alligator snapping turtle wiggles that little tongue. The fish swims into the mouth of the turtle, thinks that it's getting a worm, but instead of getting a worm and getting a meal, the fish becomes the meal. So that's alligator snapping turtle. Our snappers are common snapping turtles and the way they catch fish, they wait for the fish to swim by oftentimes. When the fish swims by, the turtle thrusts out its head with its mouth open and sucks in and snaps at the same time. So it's a very different way of catching fish. These guys lure the fish into their mouth, whereas our common snapping turtles will wait because they're a lion weight predator. And when that fish swims by, they thrust and they close their mouth and inhale at the same time. Awesome strategy if you're a fish eating predator. All right. So um, I've got uh, the box turtle back with me here and I've got a little painted turtle shell. Uh, these are really, really beautiful turtles and they call them painted turtles because of the different colors that you would see on their shell as well as on their arms, their legs, their head and their tail. Unfortunately, this little one uh, didn't live very long. This was probably a two-year-old turtle and I can see that it was chewed on by a predator. So. A water turtle like this is more vulnerable than a land turtle like this if they're out of the water. This could have been caught by an otter and brought out of the water. It could have been caught by a great blue heron. It could have been caught by a seagull. There's any number of different predators, including weasels, that would gladly eat a turtle. So a painted turtle like this is more vulnerable, which again means that they are more likely to be eaten by a predator. So vulnerable means that they're in potential danger. They don't have as much shell because it's a water turtle. And we talked about before, water turtles have less shell so that they can be able to swim. It's also why an animal like a snapping turtle is more likely to be nervous when they're out of the water because they don't have the same type of shell that a land turtle has. So a box turtle like this, for example, you can see he's not afraid because this was somebody's pet. So he shouldn't have been taken from the wild, but he was. When you pick up a wild box turtle, you know it because they are afraid even just to be picked up. I can touch his head, I can touch his legs, and he still doesn't go into his shell. But box turtles have a hinge on their shell right there, and they can open and close their shell. So when the turtle is very scared, the head goes inside the shell, the legs go inside the shell, and then they close that hinge. So land turtles are more equipped to deal with land predators. But of course, a wolf could crack that shell. So the key is for an animal like this, have colors that allow you to blend in because if your predator can't find you, then your predator can't eat you. So these colors that you see here, that blend of color and that blend of pattern allows this turtle to disappear into the leaf litter in the forest. So if this turtle were in the forest and we were coming along, they hear us and they go into their shell, they close up, they stay hidden until you leave. It's not easy to find a box turtle even in a place like this where there's good box turtle habitat. But as I was saying before, too many turtles have been taken from places like this. People go to a park, they find a turtle and sometimes they take it home with them. People find a turtle in their backyard. They see that it's alone. They might even find a baby turtle, a turtle like this or even smaller. As I mentioned, this is a year or two year old painted turtle. When they hatch, they're about this big and people find them alone. And sometimes people think that they should bring them home with them because that turtle is alone. 
Turtles are reptiles, and most reptiles, they take care of themselves from birth. So when the mama lays her eggs, she's done with her job. So the different predators that might eat the eggs include foxes and possums and skunks um, and weasels. So the mom often lays the eggs before it rains so that the rain then washes away any sign that she was around. So as the weather gets warmer like this, and as we get some heavy storms, which we've started to get, that's when the box turtles and other turtles either come out of the forest or come out of a pond like we have down there and lay their eggs. They need to put those eggs in the right spot, and once they do, their job is done. When the babies hatch, they're on their own. But that's why turtles have lots of babies. They lay lots of eggs. A snapping turtle can lay as many as a hundred eggs because the parents are not there to take care of those babies. The babies take care of themselves. save somebody else. That's not going to help me or the animal. So I park my car in the middle here. I put my hazards on so that people know that something's going on and they slow down. The turtle's in the middle of the road. You can see he's not trying to get out of the road. The strategy of a turtle when they're in danger is to freeze. They're not running oftentimes. They're just staying still. That's not going to save the turtle from a car. So they're doing what they would naturally do from a predator and just staying still is what's helping them to blend in and camouflage but that's not going to save them from a car because that shell as we've talked about is part of their skeleton if a car were to run over this animal it's likely to kill it and if it doesn't kill it that shell is going to be broken and if that animal doesn't get help they're probably going to die so I stop the car I get out of the car, I assess the situation, make sure that it's safe. I understand that with a snapping turtle, when I pick it up, there's a good chance it's gonna to try to bite me. It doesn't know that I'm here to save it. Snapping turtles are believed by many people to be mean or to be bad. They're not mean, they're not bad, but they are afraid of humans and for good reason. This is one of the turtles in our country that has largely been eaten by humans. So alligator snapping turtles are very rare in their natural habitat, unfortunately, because of that. So all the more reason to help one if we come into a situation where one is crossing the road. Roads came after turtles. Turtles came long before roads. So if they're in the middle of the road, they're not lost. They are migrating to another place to live or to a place to lay their eggs. Or in the fall, they might be migrating to a place where they're going to sleep for the winter. So. We picked the snapping turtle up from the back. So in our area, we don't have alligator snapping turtles. We have common snapping turtles. It's gonna look a lot like this. We talked about that before. So with a snapping turtle, a common snapping turtle can bite about halfway back on their shell. So you notice where I'm holding it. I'm holding it behind what would be sort of the midpoint. So the midpoint would be somewhere around there. I hold it behind there. You can see that I'm getting scratched. It's trying to get away from me. It's a water turtle. Turtles don't want to be in the air, period. And water turtles, when they're on the land, they know that they could be vulnerable because they don't have enough shell to hide. So we don't want to bring the turtle back this way. We saw the turtle was going in that direction. So we bring it in that direction. I bring it across the road. I'm safely handling it so it can't bite me. I bring it to the other side, which is where it intended to go. And I let it go. Don't bring it home with you. It's a wild animal, let it be a wild animal. And understand that they know where they're going. Turtles came before roads. So if they've got to cross the road, that's what they've got to do. It's dangerous, I know, but they don't have a choice. So if we can help one, we should. But kids, I want you to be sure that you're being safe. If you find a turtle crossing the road, make sure that you get an adult to help you to get that turtle to safety because you don't want to get hurt yourself 
in the process of trying to help the turtle. So let's be safe, but let's care. I've had a family call me more than one time because they needed my help to help the turtle to cross the road because they didn't know how to do it. So if we don't know how to do it the right way, don't do it. Some people say that you should pick the turtle up by its tail and carry the turtle by its tail. Do not do that. Don't carry it by its tail. Don't carry it by its legs. You can hurt the turtle. That tail is connected to the backbone. That means the spine, the vertebrae, run all the way through that tail. You pick it up by its tail, you could actually separate part of its spine. And that's really dangerous. We, we uh, imagine that I'm driving along and I, I find a box turtle crossing the road. So I put my hazards on so that people know that there's something in the road. I want to be safe and I want to help the animal to be safe. Now oftentimes if you find a turtle crossing the road, it's not going to look like this when you approach it. It might have those colors, but the behavior is going to be different. You see how this turtle is out of its shell? It's not afraid. It should be afraid right now. And if it was a wild turtle, it would be. So why is this turtle not afraid? Because somebody took it out of the wild. And it very well could have been that that turtle was crossing the road, and instead of helping it to cross the road, they took it home with them. They might have meant well, but by taking the animal out of its home, they didn't help it. They just took the animal away from its habitat. So help the turtle to cross the road if it's safe. Now, the strategy of a box turtle when they're in trouble is to hide inside their shell. So I have helped many box turtles that were in the middle of the road and they were hiding inside their shell because when the car comes by, what do they do? They hide inside their shell. They aren't designed to deal with cars. Turtles came before cars and turtles came before roads. So they try to defend themselves from a car the same way they would try to defend themselves from a predator like a wolf or a mountain lion or in this area, bobcats and coyotes and weasels. They hide inside their shell and for a box turtle as we learned, they can close that shell and they can hide inside their shell because that's what box turtles do. They've got that hinge. So the poor animal's in the middle of the road, hiding, hoping that the danger's gonna go away. But when that one car goes away, another car is coming. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't see the turtle in the middle of the road. I don't know how people don't see this because we should be paying attention to the road. I see the turtle, I stop the car, I get out, and where do I bring it? If the turtle is going that way, I wanna bring the turtle to the road or the side of the road where the turtle was going. If the turtle was going this way, I'm gonna bring it to the side of the road that the turtle was going because there's a good chance that that turtle is going to lay its eggs. So we don't wanna take them away from their home. We wanna help them to get where they were going. So make sure it's safe and make sure that you know how to do it properly. Please don't take the turtle home with you don't take wild animals out of the wild. Let's let them be where they belong. All right, so guys, we learned a lot about turtles today. Um, there's some amazing turtle species in New York. Um, we've got some amazing turtle species, some of us in our own backyard. Get out to an area park. Uh, New York, Westchester County uh, has some beautiful parks. Uh, check out the, the Land Trust website. Check out the town websites. Find a park, get out there and enjoy it. Um, Please leave animals in their natural habitat. Enjoy them, learn about them. These are our wild neighbors, and the more we know about our wild neighbors, the more we're gonna care about them, and the more we're gonna protect them. And if our wild neighbors are doing well, that means we're taking good care of the environment, which is good for us and them. So do what you can do to make the world a better place. I'm Chris Evers from Animal Embassy, and I wanna thank the Lewisboro Land Trust uh, for having me share all this knowledge with you today. Thank you for watching this video today in honor of World Turtle Day. We hope you have learned a lot and please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll receive notifications of new videos.